about it. Yeah! Perfect. What an amazing fish. Look, you can see him on the screen there. Fantastic. It's at least two meters this one. You want to jump? He's going to jump. Yeah. <laughs> I have it here. It's getting tired. I'm not. Du skal se hovedet til venstre, og halen er til højre. Så svømmer den der vej. Du kan tydeligt se støren her, den er lige under båden her, lige en smule bagved. Der er en nice one underneath my belly boat nu. Jeg kan se ham på skærmen, men han er ikke taget mine ord. Kom on! He swims off again. Vi står og svømmer mod højre. Man kan se hovedet der, finnerne og halen der over til siden. At least they like the worms. That was a good fish. Du kan se en beluga på bunden der. Man kan se den vender med hovedet fremad, og det er af finderne, og så kan man se halen, den vejer bag os her. Der står sandsynligvis og yder noget nede på bunden. Ja! Det chased the worm after I... I lost it the first time. Is it big one, do you think? Ja. Fantastic! Can you see it? Great. I need to go after yeah, it. You, yeah, just follow the bastard. It might jump her. So this is a rod that a friend of mine built. It's made of uh, glass fiber, which is way stronger than carbon. And for these things you really need that. And as you can see, there's a handle here that's to save my back while fighting a big fish. Yeah, yeah. You can just hold it like that. The eyes are what you call spiral wrap. You can see the first one is like you would expect. And then it slowly starts to spiral around until they are upside down. That is the best way to do because it, um, the, the line never touches the blank of the, of the rod. And also the rod is not, does not have the tendency to turn in my hands. Now you see I'm fishing with a reel, a fixed, not a fixed pull reel, but uh, this, this uh, bait caster reel. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you use a plain rod, it constantly tries to turn around in your hand. Yeah, so now you're dragged around? Yeah, now he's dragging me. He's walking the dog, right? <laughs> I am walking the dog, I don't know. <laughs> what an amazing fish. Look, you can see him on the screen there. Fantastic. It's at least two meters, this one. Such hard work, this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how long have you had it on now? 10 I minutes? 10, 20, 10, 15 minutes? And it's still not uh, no, getting close to the surface? At times it gets a little bit closer. Actually for sturgeon, you have to wait until they, until they are really tired and then you see bubbles coming up. Yeah, yeah. Um, catfish does that as well. If you see the bubbles, you know that you're, you're nearing the end of the fight. But for now it's just hold on for, <laughs> for dear life. <laughs> but this is a rod you can actually fight tuna with it. This is a very heavy rod. I think it's, yeah. it's at least a 50 pounds rod. <laughs> but uh, my friend calls it the back, you can see it. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a real brand, it's a, it's a fantasy of his. But the backbone series, yeah, it's in the surface. He might jump, he's gonna jump. Yeah. <laughs> it's bigger than the other one. <laughs> Where did we? It's getting tired now. Yeah. Woohoo! What a fish! <laughs> wow! What a fish, yeah. What a fantastic looking fish. These fins, I bought them in a diver's shop, as you can see. Uh, they have this hole here that makes it less tiresome to use them. Actually with an engine you don't need big fins, but I still like it uh, because uh, sometimes like catfish they can be shy 
of, of, of noises or of engines, but attracted by fins. So then sometimes I navigate towards a big cat and then I stop like when I'm 20 meters from him or 10 meters from him and the rest I do with, uh, with my fins. Uh, what I also like about these is that they float. Uh, in the past I used other brands and they sank. So quite often, uh, like once a year, I would lose one of my fins and I can guarantee you with one fin it's to totally impossible. <laughs> You'll be circling around. Yeah, you're circling <laughs> around. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. That happened to me once in Ireland uh, when I was in the middle of nowhere. So I had to fabricate a fin of my own uh, in the evening from plastic I found <laughs> somewhere. So that was not nice. Another good thing about these fins is this system, this trap-on system. You will see how, so I put in my shoe my boot and it's on. So no need to fiddle around with straps and buckles and whatever. So you put in your shoe, you pull and they're on. This is very strong. I have I've used these for I think at least five years and never had to replace anything about them. Uh, I don't know the brand but the S uh, is the oh uh, Scuba Pro is the brand and it's called the Sea Wing Nova. <laughs> I'm very, very happy with these fins. Um, but as I said, if you don't plan to go for very shy fish, you can also use uh, smaller fins. Uh, it also happened to me that I forgot my fins at home and I had to fish the entire evening or night without fins. That, you can do that as well because then you steer with your feet. And actually what happens is that your feet, uh, they are like the rudder of a boat. If I do this, my boat, you can see it even here. I do this, my boat starts, starts to turn in that direction. So it takes some Getting used to it is like driving a car. In the beginning you have all these separate actions to, 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 to remember, but now I do all of this automatically. I don't even have to think how to move my feet. So uh, if you practice a little bit, a few days or, or a few hours, uh, you will definitely get away with it. Yeah, I'm having the time of my life. I really enjoy it uh, here in Denmark. Um, it's not yet my personal record. Uh, the biggest fish I caught like this, the biggest beluga sturgeon I caught like this, uh, weighed over 120 kilos. I could not even lift the head on my own. We needed uh, three or four persons to actually <laughs> lift it out of the water. Um, yeah, it was great. I, uh, I approached this huge signal and I thought if this one is gonna take my worms, I'm in trouble. And then I felt, um, I, I didn't feel anything. I just saw that my sinker moved a little bit uh, up in the water, which means that the fish was just lifting its head with my sinker underneath. And then I struck and then he jumped. He jumped like five meters from me. Bam! And when he landed in the water, my boat was rocking because of the waves <laughs> that, that, that that crash had caused. And then he uh, dragged me around the lake, um, a very big lake uh, 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 that was for an hour and 20 minutes. And um, I was extremely tired after that and I threw my rod in the bush <laughs> and I stopped fishing for that day. It was just, I was, it was clear that that was the, the limits of my own, <laughs> my own strength and uh, that I needed to go to, to do more workouts in the sports center to be <laughs> able to master bigger fish. Now what you see here on my screen is a sturgeon. He is approximately six meters away from me. I am at the zero, two meters, four meters, six meters so he's underneath the line of the six meters i will now focus I zoom in a little bit on this on this fish you can clearly distinguish the shape of a sturgeon you see its mouth its pectoral fins and its tail with the two tail lobes when i will fish for this fish when i will try to target him uh, pelagic pelagic fishing uh, i will try to approach him from the front so i will not just navigate over his back and then drop my bait, so my worms. No, I will make a detour and try to end up here, more or less, and then slowly approach him and drop my bait. The reason for that is I don't want to go over the fish uh, before he has seen my bait, because if I go over the fish with my uh, engine and my, my transducer and so on, uh, he will be alarmed and he will know that I am there. Uh, you need to be as stealth as possible. Uh, it's, it's like when, you were, um, when, when you're sneaking up on a, on a carp in the surface. Uh, you try to be as quiet uh, and insuspicious as possible. That's what I do with, with the sturgeon. Well, to be honest, with a sturgeon, it's not that important. Uh, but with catfish, especially catfish under pressure, uh, it is. A catfish is very shy, learns very, very fast. So if you just go over a catfish with your belly boat and then drop the, the worms or the bait fish or whatever, or, or, the, or the lure, the soft lure, um, you will have spooked it. 
got it. Yeah! Perfect. <laughs> Dragged around again. <laughs> Takes a good one. <laughs> yeah. One. This is a very beautiful fish. Yeah. Look. This is a white sturgeon, stronger and faster than the uh, belugas. That's why, despite its uh, moderate size, I think it's like 150 maybe, uh, it took such uh, strong runs. Um, it's, it fights harder than a, than a beluga. I, I, I really like this species of fish. It's very, very beautiful. The white sturgeon. So when you fish for a sturgeon from a belly boat, you need afterproof tackle. Uh, everything needs to be very, very strong. And I know what I'm talking about because uh, a few months ago, I had a, a, I hooked one with a with a trace that was uh, um, uh, 80 kilos, so 200 pounds, and it broke my trace while it was jumping. Oh, yeah. So it jumped, and when it landed, it broke my brand new trace. So now I upgraded, and I'm using 250 pound uh, uh, Kevlar for that. So 250 pound Kevlar, like 60 to 80 centimeters, a good hook. This is a gorilla hook, not too big, it's a 4-0. Uh, there's no need to use two hooks, uh, not to damage the sturgeon, but also there's, it's not like a catfish. They, they take the bait in, in one gulf. Uh, you just feel uh, a, a nice touch or, or a nibble, but you strike immediately. You need to react very fast. Then what I have is um, uh, two beads, rubber beads. Uh, I don't like noise. I don't like my rig to make noise. I, I don't do that. I don't like that for zander and not for catfish either. So that's why I'm not using swivels. I'm always using loop-in-loop -loop connections, as you can see. Uh, so a sinker, this is a sinker that has a flat surface here. And I uh, use that because it better reflects um, the sonar, the transducer rays. That's a flat, hard surface. So the transducer meets a very hard object and I get a clearer signal of my LED. So I know better uh, where my uh, bait finds itself. And then you have the, uh, the mono, as I said, a very thick mono, the big game uh, mono line and also loop in loop. Make sure that the central hole of your lead is very big because if your main line breaks, it, the fish needs to be able to get rid of the, uh, of the sinker. So, one of the uh, important things in sturgeon fishing is that you need to use a small hook. Don't use an 8-0 like you would do for catfish. Uh, despite the fact that these fish have huge mouth, um, smaller hooks work better. And I think that's because they have a thick lip and then all the rest is very hard. So you need to hook them just behind the lip. And if your hook, if the bend is too broad like this, uh, it, it meets the, the, the hard uh, part, the hard bone plates of the mouth. So you need to hook it just uh, behind the lip. That's why I use this one. That's a 4-0. Then I put on um, as many worms as I can. Uh, I don't put them through the head, but through the middle. Just like this. And then I put on uh, like six until the hook is full. Uh, sometimes when I'm fishing, uh, you will see that the, the, the worms will, will drop a little bit and then I put on one or two more, but that's not really necessary. Um, they are not hook shy. Sturgeon are not hook shy. The only thing that they are shy of a little bit is the boat above their head. Um, so you can see this is a nice bunch of hook of uh, worms and the last one I thread them on the hook uh, to cover the entire hook point like that. So I drop it and look at the action of these worms because your boat is always moving a little bit this is the action you don't need to move them while you're fishing you just drop this as close to the head of a fish as possible and and the natural movement of your boat creates this very tantalizing movement. And that's enough to make them bite? That's enough to make them bite. Not all of them, evidently, but if, if it just swims past it, try to follow it and do that again. And if it, it, you get, Sometimes I chase the same fish for like 10, 20 minutes and then suddenly it takes. But not always. <laughs> it's still fishing, right? It's not a, a mathematics. I have it here. It's getting tired at last. Perfect. It's a beautiful fish again. Looks like a shark. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Come here, you. Come on, not gonna fight you by hand.
They look like sharks, don't they? Yeah, what a beauty. With the tail and the color and the, their strength. They've got leeches on its back. Okay, shall we release him? Yeah. Goodbye, my friend. <laughs> well, congratulations, uh, Tom. These uh, sturgeon might be the first uh, belugas or even sturgeon caught from a belly boat in Denmark. So that was well done. Thank you very much. I, I can only hope that the sport will take off or this kind of sport will take off in, the, in Denmark as well because it's, it, it's such a fantastic experience. And while we are waiting for the truly wild sturgeon of Europe to, to, to rediscover our, our rivers, uh, we can uh, have fun with this, right? And I have high hopes that one day, in a, in a, few, in a few decades perhaps, we will have sturgeon again, uh, European sturgeon again in our rivers, because uh, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in France, they are starting to reintroduce these majestic fish. And then we wouldn't depend on uh, belugas in lakes, but we can go for the real thing, the river sturgeon.